Welcome, all my friends, to a once-in-a-lifetime superhero story where the Justice League is challenged by the most powerful supervillain in the universe. Everything begins with Lex Luthor fighting one-on-one -on -one with the Hawk Girl. Since Luthor is overpowering her, Superman arrives to attack Lex Luthor, much to the dismay of the Hawk Girl. Understanding the situation, Lex Luthor causes a shipwreck in order to escape from the League. Desperate, Luther flees to LexCorp and begs his former assistant, Mercy Graves, now the company's CEO, for help. Mercy, however, shows no pity whatsoever for Luther, since she is the one who saved LexCorp from bankruptcy, after Luther left for his power-hungry adventures. Finally, she obeys when Luther menacingly threatens her into telling him the whereabouts of his old employee, Professor I won't. even though she had already fired him. Meanwhile, the Justice League lead by Superman, are helping the Coast Guard and the Fire Brigade to clear out the shipwreck and help the people. Superman requests John Johns to make a psychic sweep through the city to locate Lex Luthor, since he must be captured immediately and John agrees, although he has not performed a sweep on Earth in a long time. Luthor finds Evo's house, but only manages to find Evo's corpse, guarded by a nanotech android called Amazo, who does not kill Luthor, but shows concern over Evo's health. Luther is amazed to find that Amazo can adapt his features into anyone's after scanning them. In an attempt to use his telepathy to track Luther down, John Johns scans all of Metropolis at once and is overwhelmed by the selfishness and duplicity he finds in humanity. Distraught, John retreats to the woods outside the city to try to regain his focus, destroying his communicator when Superman contacts him. John switches into his original Martian form and escapes into the forest. Luther takes advantage of Amazo's naivete by appointing himself Amazo's new father, since Amazo is longing for Professor Evo to return. Luther asks for Amazo's help to repair his armor, and he instructs Amazo to steal some fuel canisters from a nearby facility. During the mission, Amazo quite easily outpower the guards and their weapons, and acquires the fuel canister without much trouble. But soon enough, Amazo runs into the Hawk Girl, and to the great surprise of Hawk Girl, he uses his nanotech abilities to duplicate her wings and mace, taking her down easily. Amazo returns to Luther with the fuel, and Luther tells Amazo a lie about how the Justice League. Luther tells Amazo that the League members are his evil enemies and must be crushed. Amazo vows to destroy the League and protect Luther at all costs. Shortly afterwards, Batman and Superman pay Mercy a visit and order her to inform them if Luther contacts her. They suspect the behavior of Mercy, although she agreed to cooperate with them. The Justice League arrives to help Hawkgirl, and she tells them about the weird android robot and his power-scanning ability. Diana soon discovers the android and all of them take on the Amazo, not knowing his true potential. One by one, Amazo is able to adapt into each of the Justice League members' powers and attack them back, overpowering them. The Mazo applicates Flash's speed, Wonder Woman's strength, and Lantern's power, ring merely by looking at them. Despite Lantern's insistence that he must not enter the fight, Superman intervenes and briefly covers Amazo's eyes with scrap metal to prevent the android from stealing his powers. However, Amazo quickly disposes of his makeshift blindfold and successfully gets an eye full of Superman, copying his abilities. Now invincible with the combined abilities of five leaguers, the android advances on the Man of Steel, making us wonder, is there really no limit to this robot? Despite the android's superior abilities, Superman continues the fight against Amazo using his greatest strength, his unstoppable willpower, which the android cannot absorb. Fortunately, the Dark Knight arrives to help the Justice League. Amazo scoffs at Batman for having no superpowers for the android to replicate. Then the Dark Knight pulls out a piece of kryptonite that surprises and weakens Amazo. Batman deduced that he has gained the Leaguer's strengths, but also their weaknesses. Defeated for the first time, a confused Amazo flees into the sewers and heads back to Evo's home. That is exactly why we call Batman the mastermind of the League. Even the Hawk Girl is surprised by Batman's genius thinking. Do you always carry kryptonite around with you? Call it insurance. And they say I'm scary. Meanwhile, Mercy pays Luther an unexpected visit at Evo's house and warns him of the Justice League closing in on him. Luther asks Mercy to help him with the work. The Justice League scans the sewers in search for the android, Amazo. But everyone returns empty-handed. Batman and Superman discuss about John, and the League disperse in order to locate John as soon as possible. 
John, still pondering the reason he defends humanity when they are so selfish and dishonest, runs across a group of people searching for a missing girl. Scanning their minds, he finds that many of them do not even know the child or her family but are searching for her anyway out of a sense of empathy and community. Inspired by their nobility, John locates the girl telepathically and brings her to the search party to their genuine gratitude. Wonder Woman finds John and updates him on the situation. Amazo is searching for Luther throughout Metropolis. He even mistakes several strangers for Luther in his eagerness on finding Luther. Meanwhile, Luther and Mercy flee to an abandoned garage somewhere outside Metropolis, where they argue on each other's roles in their lives. Luther insists that Mercy is obsessed with his thirst and passion for power and dominance. Luther works on his suit when the power goes out, and suddenly, Amazo shows up. Mercy, taken aback by the sudden appearance of the android, shoots at him in vain. Amazo, however, begins to question Luther's motives and why he wants the League gone. Luther plays the ill, innocent fool and tricks Amazo once again. After the android departs once again to do Luther's bidding, Mercy warns Luther about conning such a powerful creature. Luther blows off her concerns and reveals to Mercy that should Amazo learn the truth and turn against him, he has a triumph card, a detonator for a bomb implanted inside Amazo's head. Amazo locates the League and battles them once again, even overcoming and pulverizing Batman's kryptonite after having evolved and adapted to the attack. Flash is caught by Amazo, but the Green Lantern comes to his aid. Surprising everyone, in his repaired battlesuit, Lex Luthor joins the fight. Luthor and Amazo take down the entire League until John arrives. Using a different approach, John does not engage in battle, choosing to stand still and voluntarily allow Amazo to look at him and gain all of his abilities. John then encourages Amazo to use his newfound telepathy, prompting the android to read Luther's mind and thus discover Luther's dishonesty. When cornered and challenged by Amazo, Luther activates the detonator and blows Amazo's head off. But Amazo uses John's shape shifting ability to regrow it. The scorned android tears into Luther reducing his armor to scrap and preparing to kill him. Luther begs for mercy at the last moment, and Amazo, observing Luther and the League, decides the Earth has nothing left to offer him anymore. Amazo turns his eyes to the stars, evolves into a gold version of himself, and flies off to explore the universe. John claims they will be fortunate if Amazo never returns back for everyone's sake, and Luther is returned to prison. The following day at LexCorp, Mercy receives an angry call from Luther, demanding the best lawyers and doctors. Mercy has finally had enough and hangs up on Luther in mid-rant. After all the drama has taken place, Jon Stewart, the Green Lantern, is in communication with the Guardians of the Universe on Oa, who inform him that his recent request for a transfer away from Earth has been denied, since they cannot consider personal requests with universal orders. Suddenly, the planetary defense system alerts them that something is approaching on Oa at an incredible speed. Kyle Rayner and the other resident Green Lanterns fly into space with much confidence to establish a shield, but the object breaks through it instantly, revealing itself to be the super android Amazo. The Justice League members are amazed, and just before the Guardians can react, the android hurtles into the planet, there is a sudden flash of light, and planet Oa is gone. John finds out that the Amazo's trajectory shows that he is heading for Earth. The League mobilizes its full strength, determined to stop the android from reaching the planet's surface. In short order, they realize what the Amazo is coming back for. Revenge on Lex Luthor. Back on his estate, Luthor is giving a television interview, explaining his reformation since he was diagnosed with kryptonite poisoning. He has just finished expressing his hope that he and the Justice League can be friends when Supergirl and Steel suddenly appear and fly him away to everyone's astonishment. As soon as he is told Amazo is coming, Luther insists on going to a safe house of his own design, located in a barber shop. A barber shop? Gotta hand it to you, Luthor. Nobody would think to look for you here. Amazingly hidden in plain sight, kind of reminds us the shield safe house of Nick Fury, where he had Captain America's Harley motorcycle hidden away. Right, guys? Anyway, Lex Luthor soon gives the two heroes the slip and escapes down an underground tube which includes a number of defenses, including kryptonite-lined walls. This proves too much for Supergirl, and she and Steel return to counter the android along with other members of the League. Lex Luthor ends up in a laboratory where he arms a powerful cannon which is based there. 
However, the league is one step ahead of him. The Atom is riding on his clothing, having slipped on earlier. Since Adam is an expert in nanotechnology and has Professor Evo's original blueprints for the android, he and Luther agree to modify the cannon specifically to destroy the android. The League has set up three defensive lines to halt the android. The first in the orbit consists of Superman, Green Lantern, Captain Adam, Orion, Dr. Light, Stripe, Starman, and the League's entire fleet of javelins. You cannot keep me from my goal. As the android approaches, he communicates with them telepathically, confirming that he has returned, seeking Lex Luthor, and warning them not to get in his way. When he refuses to turn back, the assembly unleashes a massive energy barrage, but Amazo shrugs it off, smashes through the entire line in moments, and continues towards Earth, leaving behind the destroyed fleet of javelins and injured superheroes. Back in the laboratory, Luthor and Adam are working flat out to complete the cannon before Amazo arrives. Flying above Metropolis, Amazo listens simultaneously to millions of conversations before pinpointing Luther's and making his way to his location. He is challenged by the second defensive line consisting of Supergirl, Fire, Red Tornado, and Rocket Red, but once again the android Amazo beats them all with ease. He then touches down outside the barbershop and, just as easily, disables the third and last defensive line the Wonder Woman, Flash, Steel, and Ice with one single energy blast. Amazo enters the tunnel, and all defenses are upon him in a flash. Although they slow him down, they are no match for his mighty powers. Luther and Adam complete the cannon just before Amazo enters the laboratory and blast him with it. It was supposed to alter his nanotech program, but has no effect whatsoever. Mildly impressed, the android tells the two men that he has, in fact, evolved beyond nanotechnology. He is a new being of the galaxy. In Earth's orbit, Kyle Rayner and other surviving Green Lanterns suddenly appear to assist the Leaguers defeated by Amazo. Rayner tells Stewart that Oa is no more and that their only option is to hit Amazo with a concentrated blast from all of their rings at once. Such an act could result in destroying half of Earth. On the bridge of the Watchtower, John Johns reluctantly concedes that there is no other way to stop Amazo from destroying other worlds. It's the only way. Hmm. Those words are always used to justify destruction. But Dr. Fate is convinced that there is. In the laboratory, Amazo manhandles Luther over the way he manipulated him during their original encounter. To get away from him, Adam shrinks both himself and Luther down to subatomic size into a subatomic universe. But yet again, this proves futile. Amazo shrinks himself down as well, though he appears as a giant holding the two men in the palm of his hand. With Luther at his mercy, Amazo then reveals that he has returned not so much for revenge, but for guidance. Luther is a man who has been blessed with wealth and power, but this never appears to be enough, and Amazo wants to know what drives him. Why? What is your ultimate purpose? What you're really asking is, what is yours? What the devil's going on? Lex Luthor is saving the world. In fact, the android wants to know what is his own purpose in life, as he is confused in his own mind on what is he for and what is his ultimate goal. Luther describes how, for all his accomplishments, he is still mortal, and everything he's done will be gone and forgotten after a few generations. Amazo, on the other hand, is immortal and nearly all-powerful. He will be able to see time through until its very end. Amazo is not satisfied with merely being a witness to events, to which Luther says that every being must seek and create its own purpose in life. It is not something another person can just assign to them. What is my purpose? I must know! Tell me! There's no way to tell. And that's why I stay in the game. We create our own purpose in life. Now go create yours. Luther then mocks the android as a powerful being who can destroy planets but is consumed by self-pity and lack of direction. Amazo appears to react angrily to this, but instead restores himself, Luther and Adam, to their normal sizes. Back in Luther's laboratory, they are suddenly surrounded by the Green Lanterns, led by Stuart. The Lanterns are about to blast Amazo and half of Earth, when fate teleports beside Amazo, telling them the threat is over. Stuart is not moved by this, raising Amazo's destruction of Oa and its people. Amazo then calmly informs everyone that Oa was not destroyed. He simply moved it to another dimension as it was in his way. 
When Stuart asks for Oa to be restored to its normal place, Amazon does so in the blink of an eye. Fate then offers to help Imazo find a goal in life, describing it as his purpose. I can help you in your journey, in your search for meaning. Help me? Why? Because that is my purpose. Amazo accepts and Fate teleports them to his tower. There, they meet Fate's wife Inza and another guest, the exiled Shayera Hall. The story tells us a great message. No matter how powerful you are, how great and how strong you are in life, each and every one of us should have a purpose in life, which all of us should take responsibility on our own. You can be the Superman, you can be Batman, or maybe you feel like you are the whole Justice League altogether. Remember, each and every one of us has our own story to play and our own way to ride this journey of life. Have your own way. Make your own story. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day. 